see us we're next year when Joystick decides new... to leave YouTube and start cultivating new produce. Can't like, wait. <laughs> you see Bobby. He's like, I made a banana loaf. It's like, all right. Good, good. <laughs> it's like, yep, no podcast. Sorry, guys. Hello, welcome to the Joystick Show, episode 169. That's a funny Ooh. number. No, it's not. It's not fully a funny number, but it could have been if we didn't do the it's, show. The show for as long as we have, have, you know. But it's still funny. Ah, you know. What's up? Welcome to the podcast. It's your boys. Yeah. Jerry's off tonight. We should make some funny excuse. Yeah. We should start doing that, like making funny excuses why they're not here whenever they can't make it. Jerry's uh, Jerry's fighting crime at the moment. Oh, I was, is, gonna, uh, I was gonna say uh, Jerry is working on a 1969 Chevy Camaro. I was gonna say Jerry is the hacker in like an Ocean's Eleven scenario. So just pick one of those three, and yeah. that's what Jerry's up to right now. And uh, like, in the meantime, this is what we're gonna be talking about. None of those on things. this episode. Uh, it'd be cool if you could support the channel, subscribe, perhaps, perhaps like this episode. Sit back, relax. Uh, Take your shoes off. Take your socks off unless you're in a work setting. Yeah. In that case, punch your boss in the face. Honestly, don't take advice from us with that. You know, yeah. wear, wear, <laughs> wear what you got to wear, you know? We're not really the advice givers. We're yeah. just more like the something stupid happened this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, something mm-hmm. stupid happened this week. Yeah. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is something that, uh, that very stupid that happened yesterday, yeah. which was something we subjected ourselves to. I don't know why we choose to do this. I yeah. mean, I know it's a fun experience and it's like the camaraderie of it all, mm-hmm. but it still sucks. It sucks so much. It's the worst thing. So uh, what, what was it that we did yesterday, boys? Uh, yes. So there is a, this is the second year, yeah. I believe, that we have done this. And that is a party based off of the show Hot Ones, mm-hmm. in which you have to eat ten wings, an increasingly ten... hotter. Yeah, which supposedly. Yeah, the first couple are like you know jalapeno Light, you know. level slice mm-hmm. or less, thousand then, to like eight thousand Scoville. If you know the if you know the rankings. Yeah, and That's then it the starts game. to get a little crazy after that. Hello, if you've seen the show, you've seen Shaquille O'Neal, you've seen <laughs> your favorite celebrity. <laughs> Yeah. Your least favorite celebrity, people you hate and despise, eat these wings. Right off the bat, I totally forgot you went to the first one. Yeah. I didn't know until I went back in my pictures and saw like that we took a picture, and I was like, oh, shit, Dylan was there. I yes. totally forgot. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Dylan there. Yeah, Dylan was there. I was there. Um, it was very painful. Oh, yeah. I remember that. This was worse. Yeah. I think this you think was so? I really think so. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't. Worse. Like, well, I, like, I'll explain it. Okay. Because okay. there were... So there was evidence. We'll get to that. I'm I'm trying to go like yeah. chronologically speaking from one to ten okay. from what I remember. Right. I remember the first wing had kick to it. It was like that buffalo kind of style sauce. In fact, here's a picture of the sauces so you could take a look at what they look like. Uh, but for whatever reason, I felt like wings two and three didn't even have spice on them. Like the flavor was good, but like one had a kick, and then even though the Scoville was technically higher, two and three just didn't have that kick. You didn't feel it. Feel and it. then four started to kick in. Four was like ah, hot sauce. And then five, I feel like was you know just as hot as four, maybe a little less hot than five. And then six for me was the first like pain, like pain. This is not fun, right? Seven was, you know, kind of like six. Eight, which is the bomb or the bomb. Oof. Dude, that, at that point, I was really like, can we just eat nine and ten and just get it over well, with? Well, I feel like that's what happened the first time we did it was that, like, we went through it fast. Yeah. And it still wrecked us, but it was quick. And nine, I felt, wasn't as bad as eight. But then there was ten. <laughs> Yeah. And here's why I say I think this was worse than last yeah. year's, the last dab, right? Well, I know that the newer sauce that they made is now even more hot. Yeah. So that with the f- sense that you, of course, with number 10, you take the final dab. There's the apparently dab. some Pepper X shit. That's actually yeah. what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Involved. They, 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 they want some Powerpuff Girls. That's shit. exactly what I well, was no, thinking. Well, no, it is the guy. They So basically, uh, Hot Ones basically recruited the guy who made the Carolina Reaper, uh-huh. which is like the hottest pepper ever made. Yeah. And they got, they basically 
basically paid him a bunch of money to make a new pepper. So it's like they had to go to like the fucking pepper committee. It was like a whole fucking <laughs> shit. And it was like they collabed, bro. And I they were like, it. make a new. And it, that's what the pepper was called. So it's, it's, it's you can actually look get at what the we are capable of. Yeah. You see that's that? a, yeah, the word that we're And we choose to, to do this on a weekly yeah. basis. We, we do not genetically modify peppers. No. See us we're next year when Joystick decides new... to leave YouTube and start cultivating new produce. Can't like, wait. <laughs> you see Bobby. He's like, I made a banana loaf. It's like, all right. Good, good. <laughs> it's like, yep. No podcast. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Another. It's just me posting on social media. Sorry, guys. No. Bobby's farming. I'm just <laughs> high out of my mind on a farm somewhere. Yeah. Like mixing. I'm food. holding a grapes and like a papaya. Like there's something here. Yeah. Grapaya. Yeah. <laughs> and then don't forget about the spaghetti. Oh, that's a whole different. That's a different farm. That's a way more racist farm. <laughs> I, I almost forgot about the spaghetti farm. Never oh, forget. My. We gotta do something. Never forget. Seven Eleven. Never forget. Fucking. Uh. No. The reason I think this round of the of the hot ones challenge was worse for me than last year's was honestly speaking i didn't think the last dab last year's was the hottest one we ate out of those 10 yeah at that point i was already in pain so it just was like adding a new like some more fuel to the fire and it was like all mm. right and then we ended it this last dab hurt me like okay. the best way i could describe it is sauces one through nine were super spicy like my mouth was on fire my lips were on fire the last dab, wing 10, actually, like, started to make my throat cough and, like, I started mm. to get raspy and shit like that. So that was a rough time. And I feel like the pain didn't last as long as the first one did, but since it was so much more severe, like, I, I wasn't get. How do I explain it? Because I genuinely wasn't getting panicked, but in my head I was like, this has to stop. So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You get, stop. you get, you get, like, uh, I mean, you know, some people get it in the good way. Yeah. Like, they get, like, hey, they get, like, almost like a speed rush out of it because your brain mm-hmm. just doesn't know what the fuck to do. Uh, and that all that being said, what the fuck is your girlfriend made out of, Dylan? Because yeah. she bossed that shit. That like, was low and she didn't even want to do it. Like, yeah, she came yeah, with, yeah, like, yeah. she wasn't going to do it. And then it just so happened that somebody wasn't like they didn't show up, yeah. and they had the extra wings, and she was like, "All right, fuck it, I'll try it." And she was even like, "I'll probably make it to five or six. And she was like, "The fucking best one there." Yeah, I want to say at like four or five, like that. Once once we reached that threshold, maybe it was even five or six. Like we reached that threshold where it was like actually painful. Mm-hmm. I remember her even there going like, "Ooh," and like she got like her eye was like watering. Yeah. After that, just invincible. Yeah, I, like, was like, I don't know. I was like, "What the fuck? fuck?" I was like, "That just like didn't... everybody at our table was bright red. We were at tears, right? Like, yeah. Ooh, huh? and Marianti's just like, hmm, hmm, okay. like you could tell she's you know, hurting, but she's like, oh, okay. Huh. No, I would look at her to like see what her reactions were because she was across from me, and her reactions were, I did not like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's just super calm nope. about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. on some like like robotic shit, like. No, yeah, and she's also big on like kidding. manners. So even then, even like you could tell that like it didn't bother her at all. Mm-hmm. But like even if it did, she would be sitting there just be like, "I'm okay, yeah, I'm okay." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'd be like, <laughs> "I would rather not." Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah literally. And Jerry champ did too. Yeah, Jerry. I mean, Jerry's a but, champ. But if I'm being real, like Jerry's been conditioned. Like this is technically his third Hot yeah. Ones challenge. And if you want to see what Jerry looked like after his first, go ahead and watch the Chronicles episode one. Yeah, Astoria there's a Park. record of that. How yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, my favorite thing about that is when there's that one shot in the in, in that episode where it's like a close up of Jerry and I forgot who I was showing it to, but I was like, damn, your friend looks mad smacked. And I was like, bro, none of us even smoked back then. It's just a homie decided to eat 10 hot wings and then almost shit himself with us in the park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my he God. He felt warm inside. That was that was fucking I'll never funny. forget that, bro. We were yeah. like we were <laughs> we were walking back to Jose's car to leave Astoria and Jerry was like, give me a second, guys. And Jerry just like hunched over by a bus stop and like literally looked like he was going to shit his pants. And we were like, you good? And he's like, I'm good. And and I remember for like a hot two minutes, we were like, you're good. He's like, I'm good. And then we were like, but no one moved. No, 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 no. And then we were like, you know, Jose and I can go get the car. We can come back and get you and bring you somewhere. He's like, bro, just give me a minute. And a minute passes and Jerry's like. All right, let's go. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Did you, did you just sell your soul, Jerry? Like, what the hell? Jerry, Jerry was doing the math in his head. He's Homie like, he made a deal with like, the devil. He's like, he's like 43 <laughs> plus 17. That's seven. That's a minute. That's 60. Like, he was just doing the fucking math. Oh, my God. But, yeah, the, the finalized the hot challenge, yes. the hot ones challenge. Uh, 
No one interviewed anybody. No one interviewed me. If I'm Very, being real, I wish we kind of had yeah, something like wish that. Wish we had. Know? It was more intimate. I told Mikey uh, next year I'll wear a bald cap and I'll be Sean Evans. That'd I like that fun. a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just trying to think of um, a situation of like what was worse. And I think the first time we did it last year was worse because I had like a, like a threat level reaction Mm -hmm. like i was like this will never end my mouth will be on fire forever yeah like i remember just like eating my ice cream covering my face like this (laughs) like please whereas this time i was just eating the ice cream like it hurt it burned a little no i needed the ice cream this time i was rubbing it on my lips and everything i was like oh my God. I was like, it burns a little. Last year was water a lot doesn't of help. Water makes it no. So water's much worse. worse. They say don't don't use water. Milk like dairy, I guess, and cold. Oof, so much better. Just any or type cream, of cream, yeah. I guess. Right? Yeah, any any type thick, of dairy. Some thick shit. No, last year I was in a lot of pain. I was like just ah, it was awful. I did not like last. Like year. I had like a high heart rate last year. Like yeah. I was like I was like fucking stressed. And, and on the real, if you would like to see Team Joystick do the Hot Ones Challenge. Let us know, and we'll fucking do it. I think I think we need our own thing. You know, what would be cool. We need though? our own challenge or contest because we we could do it, you know? right? We could do it, the four of us, you, me, Joey, Jerry, and we already have a fifth member who hates spicy shit that could just ask his questions and do stupid shit while we're get while we're dying. You know, so like think about it. Yeah, I I thought I thought of like something else we could do where it's like we do a different type of challenge. I don't know what, but like spicy is the easier <clears> one. <throat> spicy is always the hot easy. ones trivia. Mm. See, you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be crazy. Or even like just that. like, a, or even just like a different thing. Like we do sour, you know. Oh, that was the other thing we I was do, thinking. We do. Well, sour. We, we did sour ones. Yeah, that was like episode seventeen of the Joystick Show. Yeah, but like, yeah, that was. no, but like we we level it up. Like we do like, like legit. Yeah, like, we do like ten different ones. We get like. Like you know, so like, like the like the the sour Japanese candy. plums, yeah. like the really really like you know, like this will kill you. Well, listen, we we do have plans to up the content yeah. in twenty twenty four, like legit. Because for what it's worth, not only do we want to obviously progress in what we're making, but it's a special year for me because it's year ten, and I kind of want year ten to be like a cool year. Because whatever happens after this, at least we could say year ten was yeah. like we did our shit. So that'd be dope. So get ready for that. It's going to be some fun stuff. And uh, at your leisure, we'll burn our mouths off for sour. I don't know what the fucking verb for that Seer. is. Sour. Burn our fucking mouths. I don't know how to. I don't, I don't really know how to. Uh, segway. Segway this. But there's something else I want to talk about. And it's it's a weird one. I didn't expect to ever talk about this on the podcast. Uh, oh, genuinely. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, and that is a, a little game. Oh no! Called Fork Knife. Yeah. Uh, so shout um, out to Fork Knife. I need a one dance. Uh, on the real, Fortnite had like a big event planned. It was supposed to. They marketed it as like a an Eminem concert. But if we're being real, it was like two fucking songs. So whatever. Okay. Uh, in reality, though. Fortnite used it as a way to introduce chapter five of Fortnite, which is like a whole brand new thing. It's not, a, not a new season, a chapter, which is like a whole. Do you know about this real quick? So like the season, seasonal changes in Fortnite are like, we change the guns, you know, we change. But this. chapter is like a event, like an it's, act. It's like it's they like change the game. game. It yeah. changes the game like yeah. legitimately. So like now there's like optics and other attachments on guns, movements changed, things like that. Certain game modes have stayed in, but arguably the biggest like change and and things that they've implemented into the game uh i I wanted to talk about on the podcast specifically to dylan because when i read all about this it just kind of sounded like the lead creative development team at epic games were like all right we need something really big for chapter five get 10 year old dylan diaz and ask everything that he likes and we're gonna put it in fortnite okay so over the course of the next seven days literally like it starts in four days and then the day after that another mode gets introduced and then the day after that another mode gets introduced. so it they so so they're doing the 12 days of christmas Fortnite style okay Uh, in four days lego Fortnite gets released which is a lego Fortnite survival game where why why does that fucking excite me you build in lego you play with Lego characters, like everything. When is I was Lego a, when I was like a little child, my favorite game was Lego Racers on the N sixty four. Lego so, like, games were mad fun. Yeah. We're, Lego it's, Star it's, Wars. It's just gonna oh, keep awesome. going, Dylan. Oh right? my god! After that, we get Rocket Racing, which is a collaboration between Epic Rocket Games League. and Psyonix yeah. to make a Rocket League racing game that supposedly is going to be compatible with Rocket League, where you're able to use the cars you own in Rocket League. 
let's fucking go but racing yeah. which is definitely up your yeah. alley as you can see as a child yeah and then the shit. day after that epic games also partnered with harmonics to introduce a rock band style rhythm game which is where the instruments thing comes into that you can play solo or with band members that is and fucking so fortnite insane. is doing like a multiversal like so multiplayer they're becoming experiment. roblox kind of yeah they're like they're roblox. really they're becoming like a hub it's like yeah. fortnite it's like this is a place that you come it's a roblox that we can play and feel good about you know like as adults <laughs> it's, like, it's like a hub yeah. i guess uh-huh that's interesting. But I'm really I'm interested because I don't want to get hype and then you play the game modes and it's like, eh, like they're fun for a minute. Like I really yeah. hope that they're actually bring some cool stuff to the table. I'm also hopeful since they worked with the developers. So there's probably going to be some cohesiveness there. But I think it's kind of crazy that Fortnite is like making groundbreaking moves in the gaming industry. Like who would have thought of like, I'm going to team up with this other game dev company, mm -hmm. work together to just infuse. It's almost like a, if you think about it, like a diamond of like people connecting each other, mm -hmm. like multiverse, like you said, that's what all the portals are for. But it's like really interesting that they were the few ones that I, people can say they've teamed up with like all these yeah. things and put it all in the one I big mean, game. Epic really just like changed the game with so much like a game that was supposed to be not even what it fucking was. Yeah, like I like, remember Fortnite was a paid game that was like it's it own, was like, like a horde mode. Yeah, yeah. You had it to was like, build and survive against zombies. And like, it's old. Like Fortnite yeah. came out a really long time it's ago. Not that and it wasn't. It that didn't great. get popular until like four years after it was out already. Yeah, and when people were and playing it, was a battle they weren't and, supposed to. And it copied uh, like a genre that was popular at the time, and that just served as like a launching pad for which is now a gaming universe, yeah. which is like which is crazy. Yeah, where they have concerts by Eminem and Travis Scott, which started like from the bottom. Now we're here, kind of shit. And then, I mean, they have their own launcher. I mean, more people use Epic Games than Steam for most yeah. for the most part. There now, was a two hour queue just to watch the event. You had like in my case, you had to just watch it through a Twitch streamer. Mm -hmm. you know? They made an apology. They because they saw that so many people weren't able to log on for the event. They made an apology and gave everyone a free like book bag in the game. Mm. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I'm looking hopeful for it. I mean, like I said, there's some cool announcements. And if that wasn't enough to make you think that 10-year-old Dylan was behind the creative process, they added fucking Peter Griffin, which I'm so excited about. When you when you down him, he even does the, ah, I swear it's the funniest fucking thing. Uh, but yeah, thank you, 10-year-old Dylan, for your creative yeah. insight into making Fortnite. I did it all myself. Did, did 10-year-old Dylan also like Metal Gear Solid? Why? Because no. Metal uh, Snake is in this season as well. Oh, and I should also mention there's also speculations because uh, last chapter supposedly they were supposed to do a Fall Guys type game mode, Ooh. and it didn't end up working out like they had to scrap it. But in the the trailer event, you can see a Fall Guys Bean character flying out. So there's speculations that they might do a Fall Guys collaboration. And also in the trailer is a bunch of NBA logos and basketball hoops speculating that they might do some sort of basketball type thing They're as well. They're just going to fucking do everything. Maybe they'll but be the next Disney. You have to Disney. keep in mind, like, I, you bring a good point about the whole, like, Roblox hub type of game, but what's awesome about it being Fortnite is that they can actually work with these licensed companies and make them, mm -hmm. like, legit games, which yeah. is fucking crazy. I'm excited, man. They should partner with uh, Burger King and give us Sneak King too. Bro, imagine we're like for an Epic Games. Fortnite I mean, that's teams what it really. They should do that. They should have like a fucking like a thing where you should just be like, be able to. It's like, hi, I really like this game. Can you make that again? Yeah. And they're just like, no, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> or or yes, we are now making a fucking. A rock band in, yeah, Fortnite. in Fortnite. You know what will be kind of crazy groundbreaking? Fortnite x Disney. Because then it's like they own like everything. Well, they've, uh, they've had collaborations, right, but right. they haven't done like uh, anything crazy. No, I, I have it. I, I have it. Right. So like, so rock band in Rocket League in Fortnite <laughs> on an iPad yeah, at E3. At E3. <laughs> I like it. I like it. They think Dylan nailed it. <laughs> Oh, uh, I miss E3. I know we can definitely uh, segue this into something else that I know Joey wanted to talk about, but uh, there is no E3 anymore. I know. And it's upsetting. Uh, so now instead of the summer, hey, where do we make all of our trailers the and game release awards? all of our shit? The Game Awards? December. Yeah. Yeah. The Game Awards. No. 
Not, not necessarily at the Game Awards. Oh, it could just be like at, at this they, time just, to prep for. Because I know that a game that Joey really likes. You're talking likes, about the game. I'm talking about the, the game. game. The game to end every all games. It, it, like, honestly speaking, I feel like at Rockstar Development, there's just a file cabinet, an old file cabinet, and just one sticky note on it, and it says the game. It's really, to be honest, like, it's really, we're really becoming, it's like a 1984 scenario where it's like there's like three companies and they all run everything. That's what it is. Is where it's like now it's like there's three games there's gta there's fortnite this uh, call of duty the, call of, that's it those are the games and, and there should be another one i feel like there's another one and all the sports games yeah yeah, yeah. it's a sport yeah yeah yeah. That's, <laughs> sport. Sport. yeah i like that i like that nah yeah fucking uh the gta 6 trailer is coming in two days mm-hmm. on tuesday and two a, days. a bunch well, of yesterday companies. if you're watching this yeah this and has got to be one of the most I mean, in terms of video games, this has to be one of the most, you know, looked forward to trailers in history, I think, honestly speaking. I don't remember a time a video game trailer was this hyped up. Mm -mm. It's a lot of people are hyped for this. Just just that announcement, because they know how popular they are. Mm -hmm. They just put up a picture. They were like, Tuesday. And everyone was like, oh, fuck. Like, everyone knew exactly. All they had to say was the day, the year, and the time. And they were like, boom, boom, boom. See there, fuckers. And it was so, like, it was such a big move that every company now is announcing their trailer or game on the 4th. Mm. Like, Fall Guys has a trailer. There's, like, a Destiny thing. Yeah, I'm noticing there's, everyone's there's, sped up. There's stuff literally... Like, look at this! Look, and, look. And, and everyone's pushing it. It's, like, 4 p.m., 3 p.m., 1 p.m. Like, everyone's, like, rushing to get wow. this out before GTA. And it's, like, <laughs> people just want fucking GTA, yeah, man. Bro. You can't... You're not gonna get someone... Oh, I I, I tuned in on the wrong day. Bro, how fucking... Oh, how the how wrong fucking day. scratch the head. How <laughs> hilarious would it be if, like, the day comes... And the GTA 6 trailer is like, Lego GTA. <laughs> Le- <laughs> fucking rocket racing. It's like the exact same shit, but GTA. Oh, my God. Uh, I did hear some interesting leaks and stuff. Apparently, uh, I was hoping that we were going to get access to all the cities and famous and the thing. But it seems like it's just going to be Los Santos. But apparently, Los Santos is twice the size it was in GTA Five, with I think three major cities, four sub cities, and a bunch of other smaller surrounding areas. So that's pretty fucking. This dope. one, this new one, takes place in Vice City. I thought like it, that's like Miami, the fictional place of Miami. That's just the one thing I wrote. If it changes, then sure. But that's just what I saw that they said. Well, the wrote. theming, I know, the or, whole, and, the whole, and, or all or, of the theming is like very similar to like that Vice pink City pink and pink orange blue sunset neon. hues and stuff. Mm-hmm. Palm trees. I was also gonna say then the theory could also stand that you could go to these other cities as well and then it just so happens to be that los santos itself is gigantic as fuck Mm -hmm. either way very excited want to see what this fucking game is up to i also want to ask joey what are you like what are you looking forward to in gta like if you needed something in the game if you needed them to add something to improve something what are you looking for damn that's a really interesting question because Um, the main point like the the core of gta is kind of like the crime aspect Mm -hmm. yeah but at this point i feel like that's not really what everyone is like i know heists were a big thing in the last game but i feel like now it's like not a thing anymore i was just about to say i think one big lesson they can take right off the bat is that they can't fuck up and not have multiplayer off the bat like they need to that was a giant big flop not only that then there was the whole heist situation where that was like supposed to be the coolest thing and it was like, you get those for, like a year or whatever so it took us a, a year to put like the hypest thing in the game that they promised yeah. us so what are you looking for my man uh i'm looking forward to like heist being already implemented in the game that we don't have to worry about oh when is this cool game mode gonna come um i want to see more quicker accessibility of like making like gangs and yeah. like Red Dead, the first Red Dead on PS3 did that. It was like, hey, you want to be in my gang? Sure. Click, click, done. And then you had like the same color and everything and it showed on the map. I want that because it was hard to initiate. Like you want to be on my side for a bit and fuck people up. <laughs> like right. just make that check, easy. Check your in-game phone. Oh, you didn't get it? All right. Let me resend it. <laughs> Okay, let me go into the PlayStation menu yeah. and send it. No, All no. right. Oh, I declined it back. It right, wasn't. Me... It, no, it wasn't an invite through like a PlayStation. It was like an invite through yeah, the game. Yeah, it was in the phone. Like, bop, bop, yeah. bump, There, like it through was two so fast. Bump, yeah. used to be, boom, you're a gang, and everyone knew it. Gang, gang. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> More clothes. <laughs> like, and I feel like that's 
redundant because that's all they like would promote like hey okay, a new shirt i want like a, a like i also feel like there was a huge problem with like the lobby system in gta where like their whole like ui was fucking terrible i don't know what it is but it's like you try to invite someone it invite like your whole friends list and you're like well, i just invited a bunch yeah, of people was, was... and like it was like mad confusing you're trying to like <laughs> just invited everyone you'd was... make a private game and people would join it you're like who the fuck joined my private game it's fucking private like, i was just gonna say fucking, i remember a broken. few months ago not even a few months ago it was probably a year ago at this point i was actually streaming the entirety of the gta 5 campaign on twitch mm-hmm. i did the entirety of it and it was a great time like i I hadn't done it since the game came out, and I forgot how not only how fun and how like a really good campaign. good narratively speaking that campaign is, but how long it is, and it really feels like good. Like I, it felt like a sixty dollar game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even without the multiplayer, I thought that was sick. But I'll just, I've never fucking forgot it. It's actually one of my few Twitch clips that's clipped. I'm like playing the game. And then, like, mad randomly. Like, I'm in the campaign mode. I'm, like, in fucking Michael's front yard getting ready to drive. And I get a call from Spooky Chords. <laughs> and I look down I look down at the phone. And I, bro, you see it on the, the webcam. I'm so confused. I'm like, how is he calling me? I'm in the, like, and, you know, I'm stoned as shit, too. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, okay. And I, like... I hit the phone and I remember I had like the wireless mic that I have to turn on to talk to him and I like set it up and I'm like, hello? And you're just like, oh, is your refrigerator running? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, fuck you. And he hangs up and that shit just killed me because I'm like in campaign Joey, mode. Like, oh. Joey. Hello, is this Michael DeSanta? <laughs> Hello? Hey, uh, <laughs> kill yourself. I had no idea you could call the story about characters from online. Oh my god. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Whew. <laughs> Thank you, Joey, if you're here. <laughs> that was great. Joey p- virtually prank called Yeah. You. <laughs> like on stream, too. It was perfect. That's <laughs> okay. He's just sitting there. I want that I imagine clip. Bob, oh, yeah, yeah. I want Bobby's that grinding. I Bobby's you. grinding for like five hours. He's playing. He's like, all right, next mission. Bro, I was so confused. Even before I picked up, I was just like, how is he doing this? <laughs> you could call each yeah. other on the phone. That sh- I love that shit. Oh, shit. More of that in GTA 6. And real quick, am I crazy to say that GTA doesn't control well? I feel like it's really clunky, you know? Like... I, I like the driving. By that. Th- the, the driving is great. First of all, I that's think like I, the core gra- auto. It's in the yeah, game. Yeah, it's I like think, they're driving. But needs if I'm to be being good. real, even then, I don't, I don't think the driving really got the good. The physics until five. aren't good. They're like ragdoll. Like they're not like was, realistic. Five was, five was the, the best the first, driving. Five was the first game I played in the Grand Theft Auto series where I was like, "This is good. Mm-hmm. Like this is I can I can I can maneuver, maneuver cars. the cars. Yeah. yeah, I'm not slipping and sliding fucking everywhere. But like in terms of the actual like character physics and stuff, I feel like it's really clunky. Where I'd want it to be a little more loose. I know they go for, like, I guess, I guess a more realistic approach, but I'm not saying that I want these characters to be double jumping and front flipping and shit. But I, I, I like the the bare bones to it because back in the day, GTA had nothing. Mm-hmm. You would just kind of have your gun well, that's and, true. and you just kind of aim it. You couldn't even aim in. Yeah. It would just be like you'd zoom in a little bit and that would be it. Like there was nothing to it. So the fact that they have like aim well, that, in. Well, yeah, that's a really great point that you now. bring up because five was such a monumental leap from four. And then here comes six, which is coming out like 10 years later. Yeah. So this is probably going to be insane. I have something to say as someone who fucking loves like those sandbox games from rockstar no that i think <laughs> no no that i think that we're you're talking about like oh from five to six but we can't forget about red dead redemption 2 because mm-hmm. that was also groundbreaking in what they were able to do of like well that's true because now they can port that over to that's red what they're Auto. doing a lot of the stuff that they have from red dead 2 they're importing into also this one that's why so in this one you'll be able to actually choose how you want to verbally respond to any npc in the game they're trying to make more buildings enterable. And I'm like, damn, this was a game. If you think about it, this is a game that they've worked on for like 12 years. Yeah. It's going to feel like a city, I feel. Not only that, you it's know? officially like the most expensive 
like of I think it's product of all time, like a two billion. This is why it's the game. Yeah, it's the game. It's the game in that fucking file cabinet. (laughs) <laughs> that mm-hmm. that kid stole from his I want dad. every I want it to be like I know Fortnite is more like Epic has more of like Fortnite. the Fortnite Yeah. That distracts me so much. Board right now. <laughs> the I I feel like they're like the 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 collab company, the endorsements, you know yeah. what I mean? However, I want to see some crazy GTA shit. Cuz GTA they always do like parody, you know. They all like Ballman sacks, you know, like they'll have true, some true. like they'll have always have like a weird company that's like a joke of like the the chicken company I know they yeah. have. or uh, was that burger the burger place was that was that burger shot burger shot I think is Call of Duty is that no that's no burger, burger Town. shot burger yeah. town is Call burger of shot Duty. is is uh, yeah GTA. the one the one that in San Andreas yeah why do we know about this? I want why some, do we know about fictional I, I, fast food restaurants and also universe also I want to know what you want to try the food. Is GTA? It's gonna be M, right? I'm oh, sure of, of it. You want how, a? You want you want the for? Oh, you want to go up a little bit? I'm wondering how crazy it's gonna be because I know they had like the torture scene and everything. Like, there's always that some, scene got deleted. There's yeah. always something racy that they do. So I wonder, it's are they deleted? I played it in the campaign when I played it again. They well, they deleted it in some pla- uh, some places, and now they have to add a warning. Mm. Some countries have like different the rules. They were like the torture scene, and I remember like it's not even that bad. I was like. It no, really isn't that bad. It's not that bad. No, it's but not. but no, Russian it, is worse than that. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Like they were looking at us, like, "What do you mean that's not bad?" And all gamers were like, "Have you seen No Russian? We've experienced you, No Russian." But I've my, my mom bought me, no okay? my mom <laughs> bought me No Russian. Okay, my mom bought me No Russian. Ten ten days early. Yeah, yeah. Think about it's that. Crazy. Yeah. It's like you. And you know what's funny? When I first played that game, it didn't hit me. Like I just played the game, and I just kill all those people <laughs> and honestly it wasn't even like i was like i was like kill them i was just like you know video game brain like get to the next level and then it wasn't until i was an adult and i was like you're oh, the terrorist wait, in that did, i was you, like oh oh shit. i knew right away no, I, like, I didn't i didn't, like, didn't want to kill the people I, in the I mission didn't want to. i remember yeah, playing I like, the mission as a child uh, being like nah, i just held r2 on that shit like <laughs> r1 better and i rather. was a pretty good kid especially at that point in my life i was still a good kid you know so like i would see the warning and i was like my mom can't see the this. warning. I saw the warning and I was like, "Okay, it's just gonna be like blood." And that's what I thought. Yeah, I was like, "It's gonna be blood." I'm a big boy. I'm I'm like 12, 13 years old. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And I remember like like holding it and it was like shoot. And I was like, "Am I supposed to?" Like, because all the other game, all the other missions were like friendly fire will not be tar- tolerated. Don't shoot the civilians. And now that I have guns to civilians, just like waiting at an airport, and it's like shoot them. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I mean, I also now? knew like I also knew like the Russia Russia guy bad because it was like Makarov and all like these Russian names. I didn't, but and I, I was like Russia bad. We're doing bad. This is how bad, bad it was for me. I didn't know anything about the fucking Modern Warfare Two story when I first played it. I was just I was I was a soldier and I was in a different <laughs> I'm country. Soldier that's, man. That's you really what it you was. You didn't for notice me, that dude. like three of the missions were like in like DC and like fucking Virginia. Like you were in like it, it was big. Can I, I be? Can that I be, blew my mind. In Modern I, that Warfare, also didn't Modern register Warfare for me. That also didn't register that you're for in me. A America, you're like, there's a war in America. Yeah, that didn't register for me at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I swear, I don't know why. I think the first time my brain in the entire of entirety of playing Call of Duty, like even Black Ops One, I didn't give a fuck what I was doing. I was like, shoot the guys, beat the level. And then when it got to Modern Warfare Three, when Soap dies, like on the table in that scene, that's when I was like, there's emotion in these games, and I was like, there's more to this. They're yeah. feeling. And that's when I went back and I was like, oh, there's some stories yeah. here. That's also like surprising to me. Like I'm surprised like, you know, usually you do a good job with it. But I feel like if I had your approach to gaming where it was like the platinum type approach, I feel like I would grow disdain for many games where it's I feel like for the most part you come out of a game like, oh, that was nice. I like that game. Whereas I feel like I, I would not kill the experience, but I feel like you always have like a good uh outlook yeah but i that, that was never the case for me because i only did that with games i really really liked yeah. so even by the end of the however many hours it put into 100 percent that i'm like that was a, a good time and i'm probably gonna do it again which i yeah. did all the time so. and war crimes yeah. there you go mm-hmm. bingo you nailed right. it all, all the all the war criminals watching we think speaking you. of war crimes somebody decided to make a boogie documentary oh uh, and I oh yeah oh. I, 
I, I Bob, ca- Bob, you should have talked about it when it came out, and then we could have gotten views. That's true, right? Because yeah. that's what everybody's doing. Yeah. And I actually, it's funny that you bring that up because I just wanted to take a second and kind of preface this. There's like a really big, like like Dylan said, just an influx of people who, after that documentary has come out, have like used it to make their own content, where they're just basically reiterating all the shit that the documentary says and then they're just putting their own spin on how sad and pathetic it is also just like you you in general people like the whole like you know youtube sunny v2 yeah you know youtube essay about a failed youtuber yeah, we love sure. that shit but like great, what great i'm trying camera. to say is i'm really genuinely not trying to do that here it's just the fact that this guy's life story is this interesting in a bad way you know what i'm saying like <sighs> It's definitely not the way I thought. I, I still think we're on a different alternate timeline with all of society, mm-hmm. but this is further evidence of that. And also just like, this is not the way I, cause like as someone who like watched old boogie videos yeah. and I was like, Oh, and like his wife, he was getting the surgery and his wife divorced him. I was like, this is going to be good for him. No. It, it, and, uh, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck happened to my boy? So, so honestly speaking, I, I why? For, like, firstly, I don't know why he agreed to this documentary. I don't know if he thought like it would come off as like he was like this deep introspective thing. I don't know. Well, because it's like one thing right I, off the bat, a documentary that makes you look bad, you would be against. Well, it. I was gonna say one thing right off the bat, and again, as a preface, I don't fucking know the guy personally. Anything I know about him is from the internet or from this documentary. He seems to be a very arrogant person, so there's probably this, some sort of idea where, at the very least, maybe he thinks that this would be good for a comeback or that it'll get him back into the spotlight. Mm. Or even besides all of that, maybe he just genuinely feels like his story is like worth it. Important, you know? and exactly. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, and to be fair, like I mentioned, it's fucking super sad, but it, I watched all of it. Like mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, and another thing, part of that that I wanted to mention was. Weirdly enough, I feel like I want to talk more about the documentary itself and less about Boogie, mm-hmm. even though it, it's hard to talk about. Well, one that, I think that's about why the people other. cared so much because it was like such a good for like we always just get like a YouTube gossip video. Yeah, but no, we this don't is get, a, this we is a don't get a full fledged documentary yeah, like that. Absolutely. And then now, yeah. And and the reason I thought was so encapsulated by it is because like every five minutes in this documentary they just give you this new fucking scene that hits you at a left field that you would have never guessed was coming bro Mm -hmm. like it starts with him listing out his financial issues and everything he's gone through it goes from that to him having to sell a bunch of his collectibles and arcade machines to try to make money because he's losing funds then it goes to him tr- attempting to go into an employment agency and get a job and then coming off across as the most unhirable person mm. imaginable. Yeah. Which, interestingly enough, is how I found the documentary because Saul, the Come Town animator, did an animation of that uh, interview scene <laughs> between Boogie and the, and the That's woman. That's hysterical. Uh, right after that, there's like a whole thing where he goes into like a secondary downfall and there's like a three months later situation. Three months later, he's dating a girl who's 29 years younger than him. And she's moved in after three months of dating. And then there's like a whole scene where he's telling her how fucked up medically he is and that he doesn't want to die on her. And it's like, what the fuck? And then the documentary ends with Boogie participating in a psychedelic yes. ritual with a shaman where he yeah. eats mushrooms mm-hmm. with who I want to say is the coolest guy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. Every, forgot his name. It was like Sleeping Tiger. Or every something. shaman is the coolest guy. Yeah. Sure. yeah. It was so cool. funny, too, because like the way it was filmed is like the first two sentences that come out of his mouth were like your typical shaman shit where he's like, where the trauma's gonna come out, we're gonna be in a real nice ethos, da, 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 da. and then like the third sentence he says, he's like, "I like to look at my reflection in the water. It looks cool." Like, he's just like, <laughs> just like typical stoner guy shit, but it was just so funny to me. But yeah, fuck, I don't know what happened to Boogie Man. Yeah, I mean, so like his main downfall, which is still the same thing, is shut up. You sh- the the main problem with Boogie, even from the beginning, was that he shared too much about his yeah, life. That's- 
he, people for, for liked how genuine he was, but he shared every single thing about his life. He's like, these are all every fucked up thought I've had ever. Yep. Here's everything. There's some people who don't even show like their wives or husbands or their face on. on yeah, exactly. On on social media or yeah. on, you, on on their platform. But Boogie would just be like all out there, especially like and it was like a weight loss journey. He's like, oh, I need this weight to get the surgery. But Which it didn't like, work out. It was a whole it was a whole thing. But the thing was, is that it was working in it because like he was like literally about to die. Yeah. Like that's how fat this guy was. He was so obese that he was like, yeah, you have like a couple of years left. Mm -hmm. So the and I don't know if that's what gave him this like complex or he had the complex the entire time. But uh, yeah, it's fucking I don't know. Just it's interesting to say the least. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. But uh, it's definitely a good watch. Like I said, yeah. it's a legitimate documentary. This isn't like a... I mean, it's on YouTube, but it's yeah. not a video essay. It's made by a very... It's his first documentary, too, so kudos. But it's made by a very, very professional filmmaker. So yeah. shout out to that guy. I forgot who his name was. Like Don something. Please like throw it out. That's his name. That's who made it. Um, and Boogie. Get it together, man. No, I really liked the documentary real quick. Um, I thought it was just filmed very, very well in the sense of like every different time we saw Boogie in an interview the setting and the lighting was different and it captivated the feeling. So not only was the words he's saying very like depressing, he somehow created the ambiance yeah, the to cinematography be exactly matches. that, mm -hmm. like the cinematography. You know, he I puts thought him, that was he puts so him, good. It's funny too. And I, I don't say I'm saying funny in a, in a twist of fate way. I'm not saying funny cause he's a big guy, but even though, cause Boogie is a, is a big guy, what the technique that they're doing is they're shooting in an intentionally wide frame and putting him off center, like in one spot so that he looks like this small person in a giant frame. And mm -hmm. that symbolizes loneliness, yeah. which is a uh, film stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. Now you can do it too. Mm -hmm. Just film things far away. Find, find a YouTuber that fucked his life over. There's a lot. <laughs> and then film it from far away. Make yeah. one about us in five years. Uh. When we're all felons. What did we? What do we do? All different stuff. Don't worry. About <laughs> Jose. All different stuff what did Jose combined? do? Ironically, Jose is like the one clean one. Jose, <laughs> like, Jose, Jose is like, oh, well, I got my degree. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's go. We got involved in some like weird scam by accident. Like, oh shit! I didn't know, Jerry. What'd you do, Jerry? We were selling midnight cookies. Nothing could go wrong. That's a Pokemon reference for anybody. Just had to share that. You know about that? What? The midnight cookies. What is that? You didn't hear about this? Oh, uh, Pokemon. The, you hear about the this? streamer. Yeah. Okay. What's you this? Hear about this? No, I don't know this. What is this? Tell I'm asking about. Dylan. No, I, I I don't know the whole. I I remember it happening, and I know she got in trouble. Fucking, uh, apparently, Pokemon teamed up with some company to design like a new brand of like snacks, like healthy yeah. snacks or whatever. So she came up with like these midnight cookies, which are like these black cookies that have like I guess white chocolate chips in them or whatever. Uh, but they found out that those cookies are practically the exact same as another brand of cookie that was made just prior to her cookies. And she was selling hers for uh, $28 for four packages. So $7 a package, which was like crazy. For cookies. And then everybody on the internet was like trolling her for the price and trolling her for like the, the fact that they were like ripped off. And then they found out that the company that made the original cookies is the same company that she teamed up with. And they like intentionally gave her some samples of stuff that they had discontinued to see if she liked any of them. And that was her favorite. Uh, so they took that and like the whole thing. And they technically did change like the internal ingredients to make it healthier and stuff like that. So that's the reasoning behind it. But then directly after people kept shitting on her about the price. And then she went on Twitch and she was like, just say you're broke, homie. Just like <laughs> and it just did not paint her in a good light. It was like, ugh. Like, bro, I'm not paying fucking $7 for cookies. I don't even like cookies like that. It's just me, though. How much are Girl Scout cookies? How much is a box of Girl Scout cookies? I don't know. I think they're about maybe four or five. But you see? And those are better. Yeah. For them more. Oh, and those, yeah, you, you you're guaranteed by America that those those cookies are going to be good. <laughs> no, <and it's, laughs> I don't know about that, but they're great. It's just funny, too, because now there's, like, a big trend going on, where, especially with streamers, where, like, all these streamers are just teaming up with companies to, like, do their own brands and, like, their own stuff, like fucking there's this guy named tens who's like a it makes money it's a professional valorant player and he teamed up with some company to design like his own mouse mm -hmm. and then he had this idea with the creative development team that every day over the course of like 10 days they were going to drop a different feature of the mouse or whatever but he made pre-orders start before anyone even knew what the mouse looked like or do or did 
So he was like, buy the mouse now. And everybody's like, are you fucking serious, dog? We don't know what it looks like. Exactly. <laughs> buy it, though. I don't get it, man. I mean, I get it. Companies realize that's fucking free money. Because yeah, it's yeah. literally a product. Like like in the Pokemon case, it's a discontinued product. It's a product they've made before. It's, it's you know, it's hey, already made. It's recycling. You I just take something you've done and be like, hey, look at this. And it's tied to this guy. for the business aspect. Yeah, it's like, you know, because companies know that it's like, hey, that's like, you know, they don't see it in terms of like, oh, that's that's a, a you know person we like. It's, yeah, we don't give a fuck. They're looking at the numbers. Yeah. They're like, oh, this person pulls blank amount. If like one twentieth of his audience bought, bought those this, cookies, yeah. you're making money. good money. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, the, this guy, his name is uh, Hitch from Optic. He made uh, he, he's making like trading cards that are mm-hmm. all based around esports. So the first one is Optic, and it's like all these trading cards that have different rarities, kind of like loot in video games and stuff. So it's like everybody's doing all this different shit. I'm just trying to make this work first before I make the Bobby Rosario stand mixer. <laughs> oh, you weren't going to make uh, the, the, the Slap Chop? I don't know what it would be called. The Slap Bob? <laughs> the Bob of Slap Chop. It's the Slap Chop, but it has a machine that plays just voice clips from me on the Joystick Show whenever you hit like Slap Chop the Vegetables. It's like my pussy's bleeding and shit like that. <laughs> let me talk. <laughs> Spaghetti farm. Can you for one time let me for one slap me <laughs> that whole long ass <laughs> while I make my gingerbread house? <laughs> oh man, thanks for thanks for letting me talk lately, guys. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, on my uh, podcast. you know, don't get used to it. <laughs> I know. Can we run through one thing super fast? No, like super super fast. No, What's up? no, no, uh, no, yeah, I, I, no. This is a bad start from yes. what I just asked. Uh, to segue into it, I was going to say, for a video that we're planning to make for some Christmas stuff, which you're going to hear about next week, just mm-hmm. stay tuned. Uh, I've been watching a lot of old Cartoon Network and a lot of old Nickelodeon shows, kind of getting all that nostalgic vibes, right? So I've just been watching cartoons in, in general. I'm also watching another really great 3D animated anime on Netflix. And I just wanted to talk about one cartoon that we didn't get the chance to review and that a Scott Pilgrim takes off. So I just wanted to take like two minutes to say that that show's fucking awesome. It was cool. It's sick as shit. I'll be the first to admit I had my doubts, especially after the first couple episodes when you realize the big twist and it turns into more of just like a Ramona story, but loved it. I really feel like every single character that we didn't get enough of in the movie got like completely redeemed. They had like their own moment to shine. I actually thought the voice acting in most cases was really well done, especially from people I wouldn't have expected it from, like Chris Evans. Like, I thought that was incredible. Uh, Aside from that, the animation is awesome. Uh, There's so many action scenes, and not even all the action scenes are fighting scenes, right? Like, even the skateboarding scenes are fucking sick. That was awesome. There's music scenes that are also super dope, where the band plays together and stuff. Uh, there's fuck the songs are made by Anamanaguchi, which is like even better. And then you find out later, I don't care if this is a spoiler, you can throw it up if you want, that future Scott Pilgrim is voiced by Will Forte. So Fuck yeah. It's just a great fucking show overall, man. It's, it's a great cast. If you really think about it, it was like they brought the same exact cast and they were like, bro, expand on the character now. And what's just what's cool toy is, with the characters. It, I mean, this is all stuff that I've known before, but especially since the series come out came out, all this stuff is resurfacing on like YouTube and YouTube shorts. But like Michael Sarah's and Chris Evans GQ interviews, I actually saw a reel that I think was made by GQ where it gets to the point in their like career breakdown videos where they're both talking about their time on Scott Pilgrim mm-hmm. and they both say like the exact same oh, thing, uh, just my- worded differently. Michael Sarah, when he talks about Scott Pilgrim in that interview, he gets like he almost tears up. Yeah, yeah. Like he gets like he's really like he's like I was really upset when well, he like, had to leave. Yeah, he's like because like, he's day. like those were my friends. Like I really thought that my life was gonna be like. He's that. like he's like I wanted to make another movie immediately with and him. and even chris evans said he was like yeah he was like i was messed up after that movie ended because i really grew up with all those people and that's when he mentioned that like there's a very active email chain that's been going on since the movie with everybody on it so it makes sense that they all got back together because not only do they enjoy working with each other but they had that much fun making the movie which i'm sure a lot of that goes to edgar wright because he has a very that's just how he makes movies. It's all about fun with him, and I like that. So. That's awesome. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork Word. makes the dream work. Baby. I'm really thinking about it from the actor's point of view. Like, and what movie could you say? Like, oh yeah, it was fun. I really liked it. He's very professional. These, this movie was like, we're fucking homies, family. Yeah, family. Like, we yeah. became family because of this fucking mm-hmm. movie. 
I had so much fun, and I don't think I'm ever gonna have fun. Fuck Endgame. He's like, I, I'm not. This was. I'm never fun. gonna have fun ever again. I'm not gonna have fun ever again in the industry. Like yeah, I'm sure Chris Evans has a good bond with everyone from all the Marvel films, but he was like, nah, it's not the same vibe as you know, dicking around with Michael Sarah. <laughs> like right. this shit's fun. I mean, r- real quick, Chris Evans just recently in an interview very openly said that Captain America is far from his favorite role. He just basically said that it was the role he took so that he could do everything else, but he's incredibly grateful for everything he was able to do with it, essentially, mm-hmm. which I found interesting. But uh, yeah, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off was a really great animated series. I thought it was fucking dope. I thought it was a really well-made... It, like It's a weird, I guess, sequel slash re-representation of the show, but either way, it was incredibly well done. And it's only that good because it was made by literally everyone who had a hand in making Scott Pilgrim a thing in every facet. They had Brian Lee O'Malley, the original creator. They had Edgar Wright, the director of the movie. They had Anamana Gucci, the video game soundtrack developer. So just anybody who had a hand in making the movie as great as it was, they were like, all right, let's make the cartoon better. And they did. It's fucking crazy. Shout outs. Now, do you think that because it's now a cartoon with like potential to have seasons, will that kind of like make the friendship weaken? Like that's when they start realizing, oh, you know, I'm the, I missed you all, but now that I'm here working with you after the few no. couple of years. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I, I think a second season will come, but I think it'll probably be a lot less. We'll probably only get a few of the staple people. We'll probably get Michael Sarah. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Jason Schwartzman, kind of like the integral people. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if it if it is, you know, a lesser cast, and even if we get it in two or three years, because it's probably not going to be a, a regularly serial show like that. Mm-hmm. Since it's an animated show, I don't think it'll be like that. Because you have to keep in mind, it's a lot more relaxed. They're just kind of in a room talking with each other. And then even then, they're not all on set together it's kind of just like oh i'm here with michael today oh i'm here with ellen today and we're just doing these lines you know so it it might even be better because they can have one-on-ones with people not that it really matters they're all fucking adults with their own personal careers and lives but that's my opinion on that at least but yeah watch the show it's a really good show and then in a couple (laughs) fucking weeks i'll talk about blue eye samurai i refuse i'm gonna watch into that look cool jamming yeah of the week Listen, I had a booked, booked playlist this week, bro. I had so many potential jams, man. To tell you the truth, I had a solid one, two, three, four, five jams that I could have picked from all different genres, too. I'm talking like old folk pop. Nice. I'm talking new folk. I don't know. I was into folk. Pick number old three, folk, my lord. Talking folk. Some, talking, I was talking some Caribbean music. Pop, uh, a sped up Justin Bieber song had potential, hey. but listen, I gotta give it up to a uh, fellow Malloy graduate producer, Low Effort, aka Jerome, because uh, about a week or two ago, put out a really really good song with uh, his boy Just End called Michael Myers, and recently, and by recently I mean yesterday, put up the sped up version. Always needed. Both songs are great, but there's just like an energy about the sped up version that's just so much more like I guess dancey about it that I really like. And, and also, I, you like faster songs. I as well. do, but it's also I like the other one too. But I think it's kind of crazy just how different the tempo of that song specifically changes it. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what I, I I I'm not good. I always say I have an eye for shit. I don't have an ear for shit. Like mm-hmm. that's something I work on actively. I don't, I don't hear that shit. But honestly speaking, like I've heard slowed and reverb versions of other songs, and in my head I'm just like oh it's a slower version of that song but in this case and in a few other cases with other people's songs it just sounds like a completely different song Mm -hmm. so i like it a lot so shout outs nice good job jerome yeah i'm picking instead of a brand new song i'm picking an old song so i've been going to the classics the throwbacks some 90s you know and the song i'm picking is self-esteem by the offspring that's a good one i don't know if you guys know this song but uh yeah uh classic I, I don't know why, but in my head, I hear it in my dad's car. Like, that's my, like, core memory with the song. Okay. I don't know where in the car we were, but the song came on. And I was like, this is a good fucking song. Uh, I wish, you know, and I feel like <clears throat> in, like, the mid-90s, you could hear, like, every instrument, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the bassist was just kind of like, we're doing. yeah, mm-hmm. and he went for it. So, yeah, good song. <clears throat> my slam is going to go <clears throat> to a song by Four Years Strong. Uh, I was listening to the acoustic version of We All Float Down Here. And as I was working, I was listening to it and singing along to it. And when it was done, 
I paused it before I could play the next song, and I was like, no, 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 now I need to hear the original. I had to listen to this song twice, and I'm choosing the original version, not the acoustic one, of We All Float Down Here by Four Years Strong. Cool. How long have they been a band? Um, I think they te- like close to 10 years, man. Like, they've been friends for a while. They're all like grown-ass men. It's not accurate. No, they that'd be about. Uh, they strong. are. I would say uh, they are now four times f- five strong. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. What? So twenty years. I mean, they've been around. Yeah, I mean, they've been around. They've been around for a while. Twenty years. What if it's been four years strong, and then the other sixteen have just been shit? You know, they're just like uh, four, they had four strong. They had four years. They have strong. sixteen years medium. Yeah. Their newest song isn't that great, but yeah, there it, is. There, there it is. there it is. Yep, they have to change their name now. All right. Enough stupidity. Thanks for joining us for 40 minutes of stupidity. As if we're not going to just end this and be more stupid. Yeah, you know how it be. Just as a curiosity. Boopy doop. Okay, yeah, we, this was a long boy. This was a long well, boy. We also had like 11 minutes no, on I know, those. Yeah, but it's still, I think it's going to be over 50, Loki. Regardless, oh, yeah. thanks for watching the Joystick Show. That was a fun one. Talked yeah. about Talked about some fun. That sucked. Yeah, thanks, thanks Dylan. That's, that's how we want to promote the channel, buddy. Uh, go ahead and... and Dislike this video. Yeah, if you're subscribed, bro, we don't need it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh, just say something really. You see the, you see the bell. About his Forget face. about. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Comment, comment the 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 the, the thing you liked least yeah. about this episode. Uh huh. 